Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Goeiemiddag, Molo Kunjani. I understand Kunjani means how are you? And then I must say something like Depulelo. I've got a, uh, we've got a strategic relation officer in our head office in Durbanville, a lovely chap, and I am currently under his auspices to implement best efforts to learn to speak Kosa. So uh, I am extremely excited about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to address, address such an informed audience this afternoon. Uh, I understand that I've got about 15 minutes. Now that's going to, 15 minutes. Okay, if we can agree on 20 minutes, because otherwise I'm going to feel uh, the heated pressure. So if you bear with me, I will do my best to uh, share relevant information and to see if I can get a positive debate going. So it's about 20 to 6 now. I will conclude at exactly 6 o'clock, uh, Prof, if that's fine. Great. First of all, I want to share with you that I am a grade 5 teacher. Uh, I am passionate about education. I have worked my life with 10-year-olds, and I have really enjoyed the journey. I also love studying and keep on studying, and just before I start my formal speech, I had this wonderful privilege to study under the auspices of Her Majesty's Inspectorate in London in a place called Notting Hill Gate. Do you remember that movie of Julia Roberts with the blue door? Notting Hill in that vicinity. And the crux of my study was to identify or to ask the question, how must a school in South Africa look like to, can, to be able to compete with the world's best? We tried to keep it simple, and we came to the conclusion that there's four words that needs to be present in a great school. And you will hear that I'm currently saying nothing about a private school or about a church school or about a state school because technically these are all supposed to be villages of education helping out our children. So the four words are number one, solid learning and teaching. As easy as that. Solid learning and teaching in the classrooms. Number two, great leadership and management. Number three, ethos and partnerships ethos and partnerships. And I see the topic relates to partnerships this afternoon. And then the fourth one, and maybe the one that distinguishes a school that's great from a school that's merely good or a school that's dysfunctional. And that's the word called accountability. Transparency and accountability. So we... Um, engineered these four categories and then we pinpointed approximately 20 indicators. Uh, let's call it key performance indicators under each word. And up to today, we really try our best to implement these indicators of success in every Kiro school. I see when I speak to Stephen Gunnian and to Julieta and to Alicia on business day, they say, welcome Chris from Caro. Now, the correct pronunciation in Latin is Kiro, which means I, the learner, must be allowed to learn according to my own attitudes, aptitudes, and talents, and it relates to a running track where an athlete should be allowed in a marathon to pick their own lane and implement their own strategy. So that's where Kiro comes from. Earlier today, at approximately 11 o'clock, I had the privilege to launch our tertiary brand, and uh, the brand is called Studio Holdings. Studio, S-T-A-D-I-O, Studio, which is an Italian word derived from the Latin word stadio which can again relate to three English words, stage, phase, or stadium. And our whole argument is we've, 
tried now for 20 years to implement solid learning and teaching in five teaching phases. And the very last one is supposed to be higher education and naturally having approximately 49,000 students at school level, our next business stage would be to try our best to offer tertiary institutes. Uh, the word stadium, of course, then, which can also relate to studio holdings, means then, in this final educational phase of our young adults, we would like to give our children, who diligently came through five phases, the final privilege to learn in an effective stadium which is supposed to be called uh, a university. So that is what keeps me busy. Let me start by informing the audience about how Kiro looks today. Number one, we are 127 schools and we have schools in all the provinces. Number two, we have 40 7,320 children. The difference between 49,000 and 47 and a half, then our small little tertiary component, which currently only focuses on teacher training. Interestingly enough, 85% of our tuition or our children is English inclined. So many folks thought that Kiro was actually Afrikaans inclined. Not true. It's 85%. The thing that makes me excited is that our Kiro schools is slowly but surely taking on the profile of the country. So of the 48 odd thousand children, 72% uh, are black folks and then the rest evenly spread. Uh, between uh, brown folks, Indian and white folks. So the, 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 it's, it's, it's representative of the country, but the profile of the country is really um, uh, noticeable in our schools. Then, in terms of our academic performance over the past years, uh, we have a 99% pass rate. 85% uh, of our children do get bachelor degree uh, qualification, which means they can be allowed at universities. And the one that we are serious about is that 60% of all our grade 12 children, 60% uh, of all our grade 12s take mathematics and their average over the last five years is also 60%. So that to us is a good indicator. Also understand that we've got our Kiro schools and also our Kiro academies. So we do cater for the middle kind of level in terms of income streams, but we also cater for uh, the folks that's serious about education but can't necessarily afford uh, the, the Kiro fees. These schools are known as Kiro Academies. Now, folks, every child in this country needs to have a place under the sun. Our educational system, whether it's a church school or whether it's a state school or whether it's a private school, needs to ensure that a child can become what that child wants to become, but also what the child can become. I grew up as a poor child, but I had a loving mom. And today, if I reflect, I can really say that um, I got this country gave me an opportunity.
that brings me to the point that even though this speech this afternoon is about the relationship between public schools and private schools, or let's say the state and the private sector, whether it's a church school, or whether it's a state school, or whether it's a private school, quality at school level isn't necessarily derived from money. It has to do about the relationship in the classroom between the teacher and the child. And I promise you folks, I had the privilege to be a principal for many years in my career. If the relationship between the teacher and the child is solid, in most of the cases, the relationship between the child and the parent in terms of scholastic performance and the relationship between the teacher and the mom or the dad is also solid. It has to do with that thing called respect. And I have made many mistakes as a teacher in front of the blackboard and then later the whiteboard. And uh, I just tried to keep my relationship great. And that kept me alive. So I was asked to bring under your attention the benefits of a private school. First of all, in the 127 schools managed by Kira Holdings, we created 5,600 jobs. So currently we have 5,600 staff members in our cookie shop. When you employ 5,600 folks, it suddenly becomes a huge responsibility because you're working with people. The positive spin off to the state is that these folks all pay tax and the state receives a huge income from this environment per month. As you know, the National Development Plan wrote a vision 2030 by means of which the key outcome should be to fight poverty. A government needs money to fight poverty, folks. We need to get, please help me, there's profs in the audience. Um, so I was told at a young age, please just don't speak about rain if Noah is in the audience. So if I'm wrong here, please just help me. Are we aiming to get this country at the Gini factor of about 0 0.65? Am I correct if I say that? Now, we need collaboration between the state and the private sector to unlock vast sums of capital to literally empower the state to up the general quality of this country. In Kiro, we are only playing a minute role, folks. There's 12 and a half million children in this country going to schools. If we reach our 80,000 children by 2020, Kiro, although it sounds big, will only take responsibility of, for 0.72% of the school-going children. So the challenge is way above only the private sector. The true fact is that the general quality of education should be lifted in all our schools. For every school that Kiro actually constructs, so let me bring this under your attention, a school currently costs us 150 million rand to put down a Kiro. So for every school we put down, logically, we save the state. 150 million rand, because if we weren't there, the state would have been 
tasked to put down the school in that area. The other factor that you must take into consideration is a running budget of a typical X model C school or of a Kiro is anything between 20 and 30 million rand per annum. So the longevity of a school, now in London there's private schools of way above 600 years. Go do the mathematics and then you see what you actually save the state if you put down a private school. That is Bayergeld. I will still learn how to say that in Corsa in due time. Now, now, one can argue, but surely it must be the state's function. We argue, but why can't we work together? Because if there's a lot of private schools going up, and you do the calculation, the state will be able to channel this money to their current infrastructure. I had a discussion with um, a couple of union people the other day, and I said, well, can't if the private sector save this money that I'm referring to, can't the state then create a budget to channel money to the unions? Because after all the unions, um, one of the outcomes is supposed to upskill the, 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 their, their current member teachers. So it is about unlocking value. I'll have to speak very fast now, Prof, because I've got six points to cover. Every time we construct a school, we make use of the local enterprises and labor. So we actually keep um, the local uh, small businesses uh, up and running. That's our part that we're playing. What, what, what makes me tick as a teacher, for every center of excellence that we can put up in this country, for instance, where you have a Kiro school, we will engage with the surrounding schools, whether it be a church or a state school. We would have curriculum development debates because there's a slogan, the curriculum is supposed to be the heart of a school. And the moment you have this engagement, suddenly you don't have one center of excellence, but you are creating a community of schools. So that's another spin-off of creating a center of excellence. Folks, I'm, I'm going to be quite frank with you. If you list a private school company, you need capital. You need shareholders' money. Otherwise, Chrissy van der Merwe wouldn't have been here as the CEO of Kiro. No man is an island. You need shareholders. The, lovely th the, the good thing that I saw over the 20 years is that it creates a win-win situation. You've got the support of the shareholder. By using the shareholder's money, you can provide the community with a center of excellence. And the center of excellence can enhance the quality of the children and eventually the young adults. And they can eventually add to the economic growth of the country. And the shareholder um, gets a return on income. But you need diligent shareholders because that thing called the J-curve is a long process if one or two of you decide to open a private school, come have a cup of tea with me so that I can tell you about this long J-curve. So you need diligent shareholders. We didn't pay any dividends for the past six years. We, we are listed for six years already. We hope to start paying dividends in 2018. So you need diligent shareholders. We are also very proud with our social endeavors. We adopted a policy that 4% of our kids must have bursaries. So we balance our business model to provide a maximum number of bursaries to children that if Kiro wasn't there, wouldn't have had the privilege to actually study at one of our schools. I can recall two years ago, I handed out our top 20 achievers. And in one of our schools in Polokwane, there were two boys that both of them 
uh, achieved 100% for mathematics. So when I gave them the medals, I asked them, what do you want to become? And the one said, sir, I want to become an actuary and I want to go study at UCT. But sir, I can't afford it. The great thing in the PSG group is that you've got the PSG group, then you've got Capitec, you've got Curo, you've got Zeda and PSG Consult. We made a, made a phone call to Capitec and we immediately got a full bursary for both these kids. I follow their academic results and they are doing fine. It's these things, folks, that we all need to do in this country. I am concluding, Prof. I can speak the whole evening. I had the privilege to address the NDP last year, the, the summit 2030, to suggest to the state how we can work together, how we can both try and help the children of this country. This is what we suggested. The country is currently sitting with a lot of educationally zoned urban, but they don't necessarily have the capital to develop schools on all of them. So we said, the private sector can purchase this urban for cash. Now currently we pay about 3 million rand per hectare. A typical campus is situated on six hectares. So that's 18 million per campus. Now, the state actually owns a lot of these urban. The state can then take that money. Also, now remember the other formula. Now you will see private schools jumping up. You will see the saving of 150 million on each earth, plus over, let's say, 70 years. That's about what we estimate, the longevity of a school. Um, you go to do that calculation. Folks, it really calculates to a couple of billion that the state can unlock. So that was our first suggestion. Our sec prof, prof, one minute. Our second suggestion. The state, have, they've got a lot of buildings in city centers. If you lease it out to the private folks, they can change it into a school and that thing called convenience. The mums and the dads that work in the city centers can then um, uh, 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 enjoy a, a center of excellence. Here's an interesting phenomenon. We've seen in this country in many environments that you have a, 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 an ineffective state school in a particular area, and just around the block, you've got another other school that's under good management. And now, everyone is leaving that school and they go to the other good state school leaving this one other state school empty. But it leaves the other one overcrowded. So we said to the folks of the NDP, why can't the private sector buy this empty state school, change it into a center of excellence? Hopefully, children will then emigrate back to this one, taking off the burden from this overcrowded school and in the process relieving the state from the burden to build yet another state school in that environment. Yeah. Yes? So, um, is, that, must I explain again? Oh. Uh, jot down, jot down your, your, your question. I must, I must, okay, you jot down your questions. I'm going to, yeah, jot down your question. Then, my last input, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, my last input, last sentence. In the beginning of this year in Gauteng, 58,000 children couldn't get placements in state schools at the point of entry that's in the primary school and in and the point of entry at the, the high schools, grade eight, 54,000 children. Eventually, all these children were placed in state schools, but that places a burden 
on the classes because the classes became overcrowded. So we suggested, what about private schools adopting a policy? Do you know that currently the state spends 1,500 rand per child per month on a state school child? Are you aware of it? That's, that's what it costs the state machine. It's about 1,500. So we said, well, the private schools have some open places. So can't we work together and then get in the children that don't get placement in the state schools at that fee? Because it's not going to cost us anything. We've got the open spots. Prof. I think I'm, I think I, it is clear. So thank you.